And we're back. Hey, it's Laura D'Souza again, artist for Least I Could Do and Looking for Group. And I'd like to start off by thanking everyone who sent me a question by YouTube, uh, comment section, by email, or by Twitter. And I'm going to try and get to some of those tonight. And uh, look for more of these. I've tried to group the questions as best I can. And uh, we all know YouTube has a 10 minute limit. So I will uh, try and get to other questions in future YouTubes if I don't get them tonight. And if you think of something else, please go right ahead and Twitter me at Lardist. Uh, send me a PM through the forums on leasticouldo.com or lfgcomic.com or leave a comment here in the YouTube section. Uh, so starting off with Valakai, uh, who asked what made me decide to go into this type of artistic work. Well, I never actually chose cartooning. Uh, it just kind of happened. I did choose to be an artist and this answers uh, Puck, P-U-C-K-K's question about did I go to school for artwork? And if not, how did I help myself become a better artist? I have attended uh, college, Sheridan College for the Visual Arts in Oakville, Ontario uh, for illustration, class of 87, woohoo, Sheridan, and uh, for computer graphics, 1988. So we're talking 20 years ago, uh, well before the Windows era, Macs had just been invented, um, the Amiga was still around. A lot of dinosaur systems that, you know, required weird uh, things. But um, I discovered, I originally went to post-secondary university for chemistry. Uh, yes, I was going to be a, a science guy. And uh, my roommate, who was also a brilliant student of chemistry, uh, noticed I spent an awful lot of time drawing. In fact, a lot of people noticed I spent a lot of time drawing, and it was my way to unwind. I didn't really take art in high school. I took it for, you know, one year in grade nine. Didn't like the program. It didn't teach me what I wanted to, which was how to draw. I wanted to be able to draw anything, everything, whenever I wanted to. Uh, to that end, I was fortunate to have an older brother who was in animation at Sheridan College, which has an excellent animation program, by the way. Uh, who had access to the Visual Arts Library. He brought me home all kinds of great books, like uh, Bert Hogarth's Dynamic Drawing Series. Uh, I bought myself How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, uh, which is a staple for any any artist. Uh, I don't think I know an artist who doesn't own a copy. Um, and I just got in the habit of keeping a sketchbook with his encouragement. He gave me my first sketchbook and it was something he was required to do, so it was something I began to do. And from the art books, I would do my own uh, anatomy studies. I would do my own drawing after drawing after drawing. I've kept all my sketchbooks over the years. I have between 30 and 40 sketchbooks on my shelves. Um, anyways, and then uh, after a year of chemistry, I decided to try a year of art after at everyone's encouragement and never went back and went into illustration and uh, with an eye on computer graphics and then um, found my way after I graduated that art school wasn't keen on cartoon or caricature but it was always something I did for laughs it came easily to me and once I graduated I found it was my most marketable skill so I continued to, to hone it and uh, it was through my character art that Somer and I got together and uh, like I said I sort of stumbled into the comic thing. Always been a fan of comics, always been a fan of the, the comic strip. Uh, I've studied it, I've read about the history of it, I grew up reading it and collecting it. Uh, I had no illusions about how hard it might be, how much work was actually involved, so I didn't really aspire to it. I was quite content to be a freelance artist. And suddenly I'm drawing uh, two really fun comics and having a great time with it. Um, it's hard to say when I guess when, uh, to answer the question from Lady L, um, when did I realize, hey, drawing comics could actually work out for me, was probably with the, the, the start of looking for group. Um, when I took over, at least I could do, it was definitely something I wanted to keep doing for a very long time, indefinitely. Uh, and Somer wanted to continue working on them indefinitely. But uh, we were only just starting Blind Fair and Entertainment at that time and discovering what our skill sets that we all had, uh, myself, Ryan's, Randy, Mark, uh, what we could do with those, because just on their own, one webcomic is not going to pay any bills. 
and uh, no one's getting rich easy off of this kind of thing. So we uh, diversified our skill set, began marketing ourselves, and eventually began getting client work that paid for us to be able to do our thing, which meant the strips. Uh, when looking for group happened and it took off, you know, up until that point I'd still been doing freelance work, uh, especially uh, caricature, which I love. But uh, the time demand became such that I had to say, you know what, hey, um, I am serious about this. I do love doing this. I do love working on it every day. I'm not going to miss the other freelance work. Um, and so I made the commitment to work on it full time. So that's really only a couple of years ago, although I have been committed to being a freelance artist for 20 years now. I have been working with Somer, committed with working with him for so, over seven years. So... Um, kind of a soft answer, but I hope it explains things for you. Nintendowns asks um, what my favorite part of the drawing process is, and Luke the Bear also asks, I would love to hear what your fave things about working on LFG and the least I could do are, also that you guys are going to come to a convention in Illinois. Um, don't know about the convention, uh, ACEN, send Randy an email, <laughs> that's all I can say. We will be at Gen Con which is Indiana, um, and I think that's fairly close. So, the favorite part of the drawing process, you know, it's not, uh, because I do everything, in a lot of cases with comics, uh, like your, your average comic magazine, it's a team of people who do, uh, you have the layout artists, which is usually the editor, uh, or editorial team, do the layouts with the writer, and then they pass it off to the penciler, who then passes it off to the inker, who then passes it off to the colorist, and in many cases in the comic industry there are still letterers um, who do all the special effects really. It's, it's uh, an enhanced position nowadays, but uh, it's more than just computer lettering. So you've got a whole group of people. Since I do everything myself, um, it's really hard to say. I mean, I love doing the research for some of the, the things we get into. I love doing the character design and uh, the prop design, especially for LFG, where I get to really stretch my imagination and come up with, you know, uh, someone might just write, they look through a telescope, um, and I'm thinking to myself, telescope? These are gnomes. They'll have some sort of viewing tank with ears and lenses and and whatnot, and on a tripod, and it will be brass fitted, and it will have wooden areas. And of course, I'm just making work for myself, but I can't help it. I love it. So I make work for myself, and, and I think it makes the whole piece superior. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess breaking down to the three major components of, of penciling, which includes the composition for me, um, inking, and coloring. I'm going to say inking because I'm a real fan of the line, uh, of line quality. One of my artistic heroes is the great 20th century characterist Al Hirschfeld. If you don't know who he is, do yourself a favor and look him up. The line is, is musical. It, it flows and swirls and, and has such variation and life to it. And it's something I continue to strive for and improving. I've also always been of the mind that if a piece can't stand on its own in black and white, then you're cheating yourself uh, and you're producing a, a, a weaker piece of work. Um, color is wonderful, and, but color can hide a lot of things and color can, um, you know, fool the eye in certain ways. There's something about bold, pure line that uh, really, really uh, energizes me. And I guess I would have to say, if I had to choose, it's probably going to be the inking because uh, even when I sketch, there are things I know that I'm going to do in the inking stage that I will leave out. Or, uh, you know, Issa, for example, never looks quite right to me until I've inked her and gotten that sexy curve to the, to the mouth or the arch of the eyebrow or the, you know, tilt of the shoulders nailed down. Uh, so there's that. Uh, you know, I'm going to cut this short now and uh, start off a next section and uh, we'll see you at the next segment on YouTube. If you have any questions, leave them here in the comment section, send me a PM or email, or send me a message on Twitter. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Later.